Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Libyan Prime Minister Fayyaz al-Saraj announces that the GNA government will step down soon. Journalist Carlos Rapascal replaces Rafael Correa as candidate for Vice Presidency of Ecuador. Oxfam reports points to COVID-19 vaccine hoarding by rich countries. Barbados to remove British monarch as head of state. And protesters occupy Israeli weapons manufacturers factory in the UK. On Wednesday, the Government of National Records Prime Minister Fayaz al-Saraj announced that Libya's Tripoli-based UN-recognized government will assume caretaker capacity shortly. The GNA currently controls the western part of the country. Peace talks between the two warring sites to end the country's years-long civil war conclude by the end of next month. Reports say that the Prime Minister will announce his resignation by the end of this week. The peace agreement between the GNA and the Tobruk-based Eastern government allied with the rebel Libyan National Army, led by Khalifa Haftar, is also expected to draw out a blueprint for the country to hold elections in the near future. Al Saraj's announcement comes on the heels of the resignation of the Eastern government on Sunday. This government is associated with the Libyan National Army. The Eastern government had resigned following intense popular protests against both the rival governments due to corruption, poor government services, long power cuts, high oil prices, etc. These protests had begun in the past few weeks. There are, however, fears that the resignation of both governments may lead to more chaos and violence in the country if the vacuum is not addressed soon. This is also due to the fact that other political factions besides these two have not made their stance on the issue clear yet. An earlier tentative ceasefire announced in August between the two fighting sides had also failed to reduce the violence. The country has been undergoing intense armed conflict and infighting among various political factions since May 2014 when the Libyan National Army launched a military campaign against the GNA armed forces to take control of the capital, Tripoli. The LNA has been supported financially and militarily extensively by international players such as UAE, Egypt and Russia. The GNA, on the other hand, enjoys the support of Turkey, the United Nations, US and Qatar. Libya, the country with the largest oil reserves in Africa, has been in a state of civil war and political turmoil since 2011, when a NATO-led invasion of the country removed the Libyan regime of Muammar Gaddafi. In our next story on Wednesday, the Union for Hope, an alliance of progressive forces, elected journalist Carlos Ravascal as the new candidate for the vice presidency of Ecuador. The decision was taken after former President Rafael Correa's candidacy for the position was disqualified. Correa was banned from electoral politics from 25 years and sentenced to 8 years in prison in the bribes 2012-16 corruption case by the court of cessation on 7 September. Progressive sections across Ecuador and Latin America have condemned the verdict as an act of political vendetta. The ex-president has declared his innocence and said he is being politically persecuted by the government of his successor Lenin Moreno. Moreno was Correa's vice president but ever since coming to power has moved in a diametrically opposite direction politically and has also cozied up with the US. Correa endorsed Rabascal's nomination in his place as did the UNES presidential candidate and economist Andres Arauz. The National Electoral College of Ecuador is expected to accept Rabascal's candidacy and formalize his registration by the end of the week. He is a commercial engineer, an economist and a journalist. Although he was not part of Korea's citizen revolution or the decade of his government, he was a prominent face on the state TV channel. The general elections are scheduled to take place on 7 February 2021. A recent study has found that a group of wealthy countries have already cornered over half the supply deals for various COVID-19 vaccine candidates. In a statement on Thursday, Oxfam International released the details of a study it conducted on the deals struck by the producers of the five most promising vaccine candidates so far. The study analyzed deals made on five vaccine candidates being developed by AstraZeneca, Gamalaya Sputnik, Moderna, Pfizer and Sinovac. These have reached phase 3 of the trials. The combined total of promised supply of these candidates is around 5.94 billion doses, of which deals have already been struck for 5.3 billion doses. Of these deals, worth 2.73 billion doses have been struck by these producers to sell or offer to countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, Japan, the European Union, Switzerland, Australia, Israel and Hong Kong, Macau. This amounts to nearly 51% of the vaccine doses going to relations that between themselves only house 13% of the population. The rest of the 2.57 billion doses will be distributed among the large populous developing countries such as India, China, Brazil, Indonesia, Bangladesh and Mexico. The report stated that the UK has acquired the most per capita doses with such deals with 5 doses per person, while Bangladesh got the least with only 1 dose for every 9 people. For instance, the UK-based AstraZeneca has pledged around two-thirds of its promised vaccine to developing countries. On the other hand, Moderna has struck deals only with wealthy countries. In our next story, Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley confirmed that the country would remove British monarch Elizabeth II as head of state. The island will be declared a republic by November 2021. While del- delivering a speech on behalf of Prime Minister Motley, Barbados Governor 
Governor General Sandra Mason stated that Barbadians want a Barbadian head of state. This is the ultimate statement of confidence in what we are and what we are capable of achieving. And added that Barbados will take the next logical step towards full sovereignty and become a republic by the 55th anniversary of independence. During the aperture of parliament where the authorities outlined the government's policies for the next session, the Prime Minister's message emphasized that the time has come to leave behind our colonial past. The move to declare Barbados a republic has been pushed and suggested on various occasions. In 1998, a constitutional review commission recommended republican status for the country and in 2015, the then Prime Minister Frondel Stewart had also echoed similar sentiments. The Caribbean island gained independence in 1966 from the United Kingdom. Still, authorities decided to keep the country within the Commonwealth, thereby retaining Elizabeth II as monarch and head of state. Most Caribbean countries have kept formal links with the British monarchy even after achieving independence. Barbados will join Trinidad and Tobago, Dominica and Guyana in cutting off colonial ties if it proceeds with the plan. And finally, in our In Focus section, we take a look at the occupation of a factory belonging to Israeli weapons manufacturer Elbit Systems in the United Kingdom. day of the occupation of the Albert factory. Our morale was high but we just heard that Gaza was bombed last night. It was bombed last night by weapons made by Albert systems. This is what happens to Palestinians all the time. They wake up terrorized by the bombs which are made by companies which are here in the UK, across the UK. Enough is enough. This is happening all the time. We are so privileged to live in the UK, we are so privileged to live here, but our privilege comes at the cost of Palestinians' lives. We have to use this to protect people across the world and take direct action against these arms companies. The UK government has watched Palestinians be killed and massacred and lose their homes for decades. They were the ones who began this in the first place. It's up to the people to end this. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.